going to have Gopal Patha Mukhopadhyay's leadership traits for Bengal. He was very ferocious. Recalls S K Bhattacharji, a sub inspector in the Lal Bazar Police headquarters at the time of the Great Calcutta Killing in August 1946. Gopal Patha looked like a gentleman. He was a criminal, but he was very helpful to the poor. During the riots, he came out to rescue Hindus. No one thought of saving Hindus. Gopal worked for Hindus, almost sacrificing his life many times. As informed by British officers and peers around, Gopal was never afraid of anyone. He never took anyone's permission or waited for law to take its course. He openly said. By the time government and police intervenes, Muslims would wipe off Hindus in Calcutta. Now, Kolkata. During riots, these Muslims do not even spare police. So why we should wait for them to save us? His sober determination underlines one of the most tragic incidences in the pages of history. And even now, after 50 years, or more than 50 years has gone. Mr. Mukherjee never regrets what he has done. He has said that it was his karma to save his fellow Hindus. And in his own words, submitting to the violence itself is an open support to the Islamic terrorism. So that was a man, Gopal Mukherjee, and that was the personality he had. And even till today, when you talk about Gopal Mukherjee. we talk about the character that he has carried out and the strength he has shown in and around the time of the great calcutta killings instructed another muslim league leader golam sarwar husain to organize massacre of hindi in nohakali nohakali genocide reported killed 5800 hindus unreportedly accounts in local chronicles register count of more than 12000 deaths of hindus and over 1800 forceful conversation to gangster cult islam nohakali could not relate as there was no gopal patha the newly devised patagiri form of attack was not known to them ultimately it became muslim dominated district and merged with bangladesh east pakistan duratma gandhi did not utter single word when the hindus were killed in noakali massacre the great calcutta killings time to revisit history as a lesson for the present Now, 16th of August 1946, as we complete 74 years of one of the most ghastly episodes of India's and Bengal's history, the current socio-political scenario of Bengal makes it imperative for all of us to revisit those dark days to find an answer to similar such issues cropping up at present. The Indian National Congress and the Muslim League were the two largest political parties in India in the 1940s. The Muslim League in its Lahore Convention in 1940 had adopted a resolution that it would raise the demand that the Muslim majority areas of India in the northwest and the east be constituted as independent states. Thank you so much once again viewers for staying with us. We really appreciate your patience and understanding for all along the journey that you have been with us. Now when we talk about this specific time when the great calcutta killings and the emerging differences between the Hindus and Muslims started to divide Bengal into different parts, we always should remember 
the role played by the then Prime Minister of Bengal, Mr. Shurawardi. In fact, he was trying to apply the technique the British rulers tried to do in the year of 1905 by putting some of the idea to divide Bengal, that is the partition of Bengal, which somehow was not done because both the communities tried to stay together and by the end of 1911, Bengal got unified once again, at least theoretically. But somehow this person, by the influence of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, started applying a plan where they can add this whole Bengal with Pakistan using the differences of the two communities. The plan was very simple. What Sudhavardi wanted is to create some kind of fear in the minds of the Hindus that they either flee out of their place or they get killed. So if you kill 100 people, at least the remaining 4,000 people will flee out of the place out of fear. And that is the reason he started to figure out what is the exact population in Calcutta and what is the exact population in and around the outskirts of Calcutta in terms of Hindus and the Muslims. What was the count at that point in time? 64% was there in Calcutta, whereas the remaining part, like 33% were the Muslims over there in Calcutta. And across the remaining parts, the outskirts, there was a majority, 42% over there, as the Muslims were majority at that point in time. So what he tried to do is to create some kind of terror even across the outskirts of Calcutta, that is like Howrah and Hooghly, where the Muslims will try to kill the Hindus and the Hindus will either die or flee away from their place, keeping all those places, their belongings for the Muslims. And the Muslims will then try to keep a control on the place and then it will be easier for them to march both the Bengals with Pakistan. That is how the terrorism mechanic work and that is how it tried to work at that point in time through the mindsets of those two villains. One is Jinnah and the other was Shuravati. resulted in killing mainly writing and molestation of ten of thousands Hindus in Calcutta, Kolkata, soon streets and by lanes were scattered with dead bodies of Hindu men and women and children. Muslim used stones, shouts, snake, petrol bombs, sickle, metals, rod, marshals and bottles to kill sleeping Hindus at first night by the morning several hindu were killed by them hundreds of hindu houses were burnt yelling terrorism call allah who akbar and kill the non-believers of islam the sight was dreadfully gory and so gruesome that respondent colin red colin john allady said it is unbelievable i never saw such things in my life I have no words to explain his eyes were in tears he stated later that Nazis would have been proud of this Muslim killers during the first two days of the carnage 
a few thousand hindus were killed the estimates vary between 4000 and 20000 about 3500 hindu bodies were cremated but the british and contemporary historians claim that a lot many were either stuffed into underground sewers or simply dumped in the river ganga or the various canals in the city a conservative estimate would put the number of Hindus killed at 7,000. Hindus started fleeing in the fleeing in the city out of fear. The Howrah station was overcrowded with Hindus trying to board trains bound for other parts of the country. Desperate Hindu families trying to cross the river Hugli in country boats as Muslim manning the barges rammed their boats into the vessels. This is exactly what Shurabarti wanted. Create a fair psychosis in the minds of the Hindus, complain, compelling them to escape so that Calcutta would become Hindu free, making it easier for the city to be merged with Pakistan. Since Calcutta was a significant city, having been the British capital for long, it also gave the league a sense of pride to get Calcutta to join their proposed independent nation. So when we talk about Gopal Mukherjee, we talk about the self-defiance of Mr. Gopal Mukherjee. And in several interviews, he said that it was basically my duty, my karma, to save my fellow Hindus. A modest small office in central Calcutta, located in one of the most Hindu populated areas in and across the city, was named as the National Center, Relief Center for the Destitutes. And go inside that office, he used to run a charitable clinic as well. When you enter the clinic, just behind the door, there is a life-size image of one of the biggest fighters of India, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bosch, the INA image, starting from the top right to the bottom. And that is the reason we can see that he was like that Iron Man himself. In several interviews, he has told that all types of weapons were used in this specific assault against the thunder which was created at that point in time. Knives, choppers, even the kitchen utensils were used for this specific purpose. And he also agreed and he also confessed that some of the ammunitions he bought from the black market. In fact, it was the Second World War which was going on at that point in time and he was jokingly telling that you give 250 rupees to one of the negroes over there and you get one pistol and 100 cartridges or you give a bottle of whiskey and you get one pistol and 100 cartridges. So that is the way he has gathered all these ammunitions and weapons to fight against all the odds at that point in time. The conclusion of all these videos is meant to get the information regarding the real facts that happened with Dr. Shah Prasad Mukherjee. We are not here to discriminate any religion or to interrupt with any political views or to create any kind of mess with, within the religions or caste or any discriminations. We are here just to portray what exactly happened in the Indian history with Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee. We would like to thank you for watching us. We request you to subscribe our YouTube channels. We have the uh, Facebook uh, channels also as well as the groups, right? You can definitely go ahead and write it down, write all these groups regarding the feedback that you would like to portray towards us so that we can improve more. On top of that, you can definitely leave the feedback your feedback are always valuable to us. Thank you so much.